Hi and welcome everyone. I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel for another card video. Today I'm getting us ready for St. Patty's Day. I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to create these cards, give you some tips on heat embossing and a simple trick to create heat embossed borders around your cards. And I have one quick and simple card for those days that you just need to stamp and go. So the products I'm using are Memento inks in all the greens, Emboss, Embossing Powder in Gold and New Year's Eve, Versamark ink, Versafine Claire Nocturne ink, Tarot Tape, On Point Glue, and my Craft Mat. Now some of the products I've listed are not there, but don't worry, I'll have everything listed below for you. So to get started, I have a piece of 110 pound Nina card stock that I've cut to four by five and a quarter inches. I have a blender brush. I'm using this new sprout ink and I'm going to load that blender brush up and start laying this ink down. Now I start with a heavy pressure and then I'm going to lighten that pressure as I move towards the center of the card stock just to kind of fade that ink out. Then we're going to come on in with the pear tart and just repeat that same process taking my time blending between the inks to lay as I lay them down and then moving into the cottage ivy we're going to follow that with pistachio and then finish off with the bamboo leaves now memento inks are dye inks so it takes a little bit more time to blend them together and I found the more saturated the paper is with the ink the easier the blending goes now I need to set this aside and let those uh, dye inks dry so you could speed this up with your heat gun if you wanted to but I thought this would be a great time for me to share just a quick and simple card with you while it dries so I'm going to be using my Misty, but you could easily use an acrylic block for this. I have a piece of 110 pound cardstock laid down and I'm going to be using this shamrock swirl stamp from Whimsy Stamps and I'm going to do random stamping. I'm using all the same memento inks, the bamboo leaves, cottage ivy, pistachio, new sprout, pear tart, uh, all of those gorgeous greens. And we're just going to go ahead and randomly stamp this shamrock. Now, when I'm doing a complete panel of random stamping, I always make sure to stamp off of the edges of the panel. After that, I'm just going to go ahead and come in with a solid shamrock, fill in some of these white spaces, and I'm using VersaFine on its black ink to do this. Now I'm going to go ahead since our other panel is dried and we're going to assemble all the cards at the end of the video and I have my Misty here so I want to go ahead and continue doing my stamping. I'm going to come back in with that ink blended background and lay that into the Misty and then I'm going to start adding anti-static powder to it. Now I'm going to be stamping using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. The reason I'm using this ink instead of VersaMark ink is because I'm using the New Year's Eve Emboss embossing powder. And whenever possible, I like to stamp with the same ink color as my embossing powder. So if I miss anything, it won't be as noticeable. So a few tips I would like to share with you while I'm doing this. I oftentimes hear people say, I don't like heat embossing. And I tell them anti-static powder will absolutely change the way you feel about heat embossing. So I've covered the entire panel. I've brushed off the excess. And now it's at this point, I try my hardest not to touch my paper again until I'm ready to add the embossing powder to it. And the reason for that is the oils from your fingers can cause your embossing powder to stick where you don't want it. So try to always handle the panel by the sides or on the very edge. So once you've covered the image with your embossing powder, I always recommend taking the time to clean off excess powder. It's inevitable. You're going to have some excess powder left behind. Sometimes more than other, you'll have more powder left than other times. But if you just go in with an inexpensive brush and clean it up, it makes all the difference in the world. Now I just use this stiff bristle brush. I think it's an old Crayola brush and clean mine up, but you use whatever type of brush you're more comfortable with. 
Next, preheat your heat gun. You want the powder to start melting right away. The less time the heat is on the paper, the less warping you'll have. And while you have uh, the heat to the panel, try not to shake the gun back and forth. You just wanna chase that melting powder with the heat. And you'll know when it's done because it becomes shiny and dimensional. Last tip. Let that panel completely cool off and then gently wipe off the excess anti-static powder. It makes a big difference. Okay, onto that simple border that we talked about at the beginning. I just laid down tarot tape. Now, I all I do is decide where I want my border to be and then I just start laying the tarot tape around the edge. I also make sure that I fold the tarot tape back behind the panel. That way I don't have to worry about it coming up or something happening to it during the melling process. I know that it's going to be secure because I am going to be putting mounting foam down on the back of this to adhere it to my card base. So I don't have to worry about that coming up. So once you have your tape down, go ahead and cover this with your uh, embossing powder. Take the time again to clean up any excess powder. Now, this is one of those times where I'll skip the anti-static powder. However, if you want to use anti-static powder, do it before you remove the paper backing from the tape because the powder will take the stickiness of the cover that stickiness of the tape up. So here we went in with our preheated heat gun and we heat set that and there's our quick and simple border using tarot tape. Now, all I did was add mounting foam to the back of the panels and centered them up on four and a quarter by five and a half inch card bases. So here's the second panel that I did. It's the same exact process as the first one. The only thing that I changed up was using Versamark ink instead of that Nocturne ink. And we used the gold emboss embossing powder. Super simple. So Back to our quick and simple card, I went ahead and I layered that stamped panel onto gold foil paper using tarot tape. I added mounting foam to the back of the gold foil and then I centered that on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Then all I'm gonna do is go ahead and come in and stamp my sentiment on the card with the black embossing I just stamped directly onto the panel with Versamark onyx black ink and for this one I stamped the sentiment onto white cardstock trim those down I'm going to add those uh, to go to some of the gold foil paper and then go ahead and adhere them to the bottom right side of the card and that's it we're done so let me know, do you like heat embossing or would you rather skip it? Leave a comment below telling me your thoughts on heat embossing. I'm very curious to know how people feel about it. So I hope you enjoyed joining me and that you were inspired enough to head into your crafty space to create something amazing today. Be sure to click that bell to be notified of new content to the channel. And if you want to give this a thumbs up, that'll be awesome. As always, know how much we appreciate you joining us here. And until next time, keep crafting.